Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special event. Uh, King of the Table 4. The biggest arm wrestling match in history is upon us. Uh, we... The day has arrived. We are still a number of hours away, but what we are about to unfold uh, is a very special few hours. Uh, so sit back, relax, and enjoy it because we're going to go through the complete journey of each of these men that will be in this uh, historic battle for the number one rank in the world. And it's going to build up so nicely and culminate at the match coming together. You are not going to want to miss it. Uh, joining me for this moment uh, today is none other than Hollywood Matt Connolly. How are you, brother? Oh, I was getting the biceps ready. Oh, oh there we go. There they that. are. Hang on. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, I got nothing. Ah. I, I was hoping that when we got in studio, <laughs> it was going to improve, but it it, it looks worse. I mean. <laughs> Do that one more time, shall we? Oh, you want the right? There oh, we go. Oh, look at the Look at, look at. That's so disappointing. But Matt, how are you feeling? Today is a big uh, event. Um, it's, a, it's, it's stopped the arm wrestling world. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Where are you at? Oh, this is exciting. It's finally here. We are here at the moment. It is finally happening. The biggest arm wrestling match that's ever happened. Devin Arat versus Levan. How are we going to go? Uh, there's been a lot of shifts in the polls. De Devin has come out as the favorite, which... Which has blown my mind. <laughs> I mean, when the, first, when the match was first announced, like everyone was just like, well, it's going to be Levan 6-0. And it, mm. I was the same, but it seems that throughout these last couple of months, and especially the last probably two weeks, people's opinions have changed. The trend is now going for Devin, and he's actually ahead in the favorite. He's the favorite. Yeah, it, it truly has stunned me that he, that he has become the favorite. But as you say, he that, that's, that's the reality of it. We have to accept it. He is the favorite in the polls. He, his blocks are sold out on State Kings. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the arm wrestling. Levan has declared that it is he's going to do his talking on the table. Uh, so it's going to be a, it's a good move, big, <laughs> big, big moment. Oh, it's crazy. But ladies and gentlemen, what we have in store for you today is going to be something special. You're here right now and the premiere is going to run for the next few hours or so. And uh, it is going to lead us closer. So whether you are enjoying a barbecue with your arm wrestling friends and mates, uh, thank you for joining in and tuning in to this premiere. Uh, there's going to be so much to come. We're going to go in depth, as I said, with Devon, in depth with Levan, and everything in between. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the first piece that we're going to be running is just to warm you up on both the significance of this uh, moment and the significance for each of these men. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. Time has come, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. A very special moment in the sport has arrived. Two athletes, the top of their game, the top of their part of the world collide. For both Levan Saganashvili and Devin Larratt, this is a very special moment. Can't deny it, very special moment. What this means to these two gentlemen can only be imagined, can only be dreamed of by people like you and I. For these two gentlemen have climbed all the way to the summit and they are for only one step away from the top. To say what this means to these guys, it's, it's, it's so hard to just perfectly encapsulate it. It gives me shivers down my spine when I imagine being in the shoes of either of these gentlemen. For Levan, this is his opportunity to conquer the world. It's his opportunity to show that he is the highest peak there has ever been. He's done it in so many respects already. He just needs one more step. For Devin Larratt, it is the opportunity to do the absolute impossible. It's to show that no matter how many people say it's an impossible task for him, that he is good enough to find a way. That he is able to do the unthinkable and achieve the impossible. 
This moment is such a big moment for the history of the sport. If you are a fan of arm wrestling, if you've been watching this journey, remember this time. For these are two of the greatest athletes the arm wrestling world has ever seen and will ever see. They are about to collide in such a manner that is truly poetic. The two best arm wrestlers alive, but there can only be one king. May the best man win. Arm wrestling fans of the world, I need to put this petition out to you guys. Please share this video. We have such an amazing opportunity right now. The sport is at a crossroads. It's at a crossroads where if we play our hand right, we reach the mainstream. We take the sport to the level we've always been dreaming of and we get more people calling it a career. More athletes, more referees, more commentators, more organizers, more everything. More fans enjoy the sport. We love this sport. Let's show the rest of the world why they should too. Wow, Matt Connolly. This, this means a lot to these gentlemen, doesn't it? This, it's amazing. This, amazing. This is a big moment, not only for the sport, but it, it's a big moment for both of these guys. They've each got a very unique pathway that has come to here, but uh, it, it's, I'm feeling the emotions. <laughs> I'm feeling them, i got to admit. Yeah, seeing the journey that both men have had throughout their lives to get to this point, and it's not just been, oh, I've started this sport and now I'm going for the world championship. You see, it's years and years and years of world traveling, tournaments, super matches, experience, all culminating to this moment, uh, which is happening today. Mm. And yeah, it you see the human side of, of the people in, in that video really highlighted that you've got a storied career with Devin Larat, uh, the man who's who's traveled the world. Almost, it reminds me of Ryu from Street Fighter in a way, always seeking out the next challenge, the greatest challenge. And the greatest challenge for him is definitely Levan. And Levan has become the Everest in the arm wrestling world. He truly, he truly is seen as the Everest, isn't it? I mean, and, and what I what I love most about this whole situation is, um, is it, it is a true representation of the pinnacle of arm wrestling. I, I I I genuinely believe that. I think that what these two men have achieved in their own walk is each so very significant and is respected globally by arm wrestling fans uh, and arm wrestlers themselves. Um, it's, it's beautiful that we get this moment in sport. It's rare. It's sometimes, sometimes we miss it, don't yeah. we? Sometimes we don't get the opportunity where a sport actually serves up the moment where the two best face each other. Uh, so, I, I, like, as a, as a fan of the sport, uh, I, I consider myself honoured that, uh, that, that I get to witness this. This is a historic moment for the sport. And um, it's, it, I think you have to draw the line in the sand. You have to say that the winner of this match can truly be crowned the best of all time. Absolutely. Do, yeah. you, do you see it that way? Do you think that you know, like when we look at it on paper, is this that moment? Is it definitely the best walks away the, the winner here? Like, unquestionably. You've, you've got Levan, the unbeatable, never lost a single round in a super match at all. And Devin is taking on his biggest possible challenge. As you said, best possible match that could happen. Hats off to everyone involved that actually got this put together. We're going to see it. It's going to happen. Thank goodness, because there's so many times when, you know, the best don't get the chance to face each other and you always get the question of, oh, but if he was in his prime, blah, 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 that's not happening. That this is, everyone has peaked for this moment that's going to happen. Mm. So super exciting. If Devin pulls off the win, greatest moment in the sport. Mm, yeah, it, it is one of those fairy tale moments. Uh, it's 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 his second coming. He's been a world champion before. He has been at the top, both left and right. Uh, a lot of people perceive that his time was done and finished, and we were just going to see him just coast out. But we've seen this resurgent, uh, Devin Larratt, and and he's back, and he's here to to show that not only is he the peak, but truly is the culmination of strength and technique all in one and then and of course Levan is just this this strength titan that is just 
yeah, he's in another league. He's yeah. in another league. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to present for you now is a bit of a feature that shows you a bit more in depth about why these two athletes are considered the best in the field and why the winner of this match can be with certainty crowned the best arm wrestler, the highest peak that the sport has ever seen. The biggest arm wrestling supermatch in the history of the sport is about to take place. The winner of this fight can be crowned as the best there has ever been, the highest peak that the sport has ever seen. Standing on one side of the table, the Georgian Hulk. Levan Saganishvili represents the East and is, in every bit of the word, the most physically dominant and strong athlete the sport has ever seen. The levels he has taken his power to are unmatched, unrivaled across the board. His intimidation at the table is absolutely second to none. And then comes Devon Larratt, the Canadian Special Forces soldier turned arm wrestling professional who has truly dedicated his life to this sport. Having dived deeper into technique and mastery than any other person alive, Devon Larratt brings power, he brings strength, he brings combat skills, he brings passion, heart. He brings so much to this table. Is it enough? What this match will come down to is which man can handle the moment better. Which man will be able to stand at the table and execute their plan perfectly. Which man truly believes they can be the best of all time? S such a such a big moment for th the potential legacy of both these guys. Uh, being crowned as uh, the best <laughs> there's ever been, uh, it's something that that's that's childhood dreaming. Like that's that's that's. That's far reaching up into the stars, isn't it? It's 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 a big moment, and uh, to win this this match, it's got to mean a lot to both these guys. Yeah, every time that somebody would have stepped onto the table, they would have envisioned being in a match like this. You know, the world is watching. This is your moment to shine. If you win this match, you will be able to cement your place in history. That's what every every person who gets on the table in a competitive spirit is aiming for. Mm. So both of these guys, to have that opportunity, this is the time, this is the moment, this is where it all comes together. And winning this match, it's going to make history. Yeah. Yeah, interestingly, one one thing that I know that was has been talked about a lot is the term best compared to the term greatest, compared to the term the highest peak. One, one thing that, that I think we should all, all clarify and be aware of is is, is the differentiation between uh, the greatest, the best, and the peak in the sense that we know that John Brzezink exists, doesn't it? John Brzezink, let's let's be honest, John Brzezink is the greatest of all time. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> John is the greatest. Um, and for, for a simple reason, if I was to, to describe to you guys why John is the greatest, I could simply sum it up in saying that, look, look he, he became the world number one, the overall best arm wrestler in the world when he was only 19 years old. Uh, he was only 90 kilos when he did it, and he beat the Levan of the day, who was Richard Lupke's at the time, um, at 19. It's very very hard to imagine another 19-year-old coming along and, and, and doing that. It's, it's very difficult. Yeah. Uh, not only did he do that, but he then dominated still to this day. Within his weight category, he's still today contending for the world's number one rank. And that's some 40 years later. Right. Um, so, legacy in terms of the the greatest, I think it has to. Be, we have to establish that. Look, John is the greatest, and the winner of this match is 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 not in any way even able to to come to, to take that away. Not even close. It's not even in in the, in the debate. Mm -hmm. um, all that said, there are still two other amazing <laughs> titles, uh, however you want to call it, the best or the or the peak, the true. If we brought everyone together at their ultimate highest point for them, who wins on that day? That's right. And 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 I think that these two gentlemen are at that point. Uh, 
Um, do you agree? Is that is this the pinnacle? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, John Brzezinski is the man. He was the man for his, basically his, his entire life, winning 19 and then still competing and still in the top 10 now and still winning. Uh, absolutely incredible. The difference with this match is this is the uh, elite moment for both Levan and for Devon. And it's a different story, two different people. It's not that they're putting uh, uh, their legacy versus John's or anything like that. It is that these are the two best guys in the world at the moment. They're both peaking, and we're going to see who can take the match uh, when both are at their absolute best. Yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it, when we think about what makes this match and why, why these athletes are considered the best. Uh, I think it's fair that um, we say, like, let, let's take Levant. He's definitely a super monster. And by super monster, I mean he's the kind of guy that has not only taken his body to an enormously monstrous level, at 180 kilos he weighs <laughs> for this match, but he's, he's that and he's dedicated purely to arm wrestling. Uh, we, we, of course, have seen many large armors in the past. Richard Lupke's, uh, mm -hmm. Cleve Dean, mm -hmm. uh, all giant men. But n Richard Lupke's, self-confessed, didn't train arm wrestling. Right. He just was in the gym and just would turn up in arm wrestling. Uh, Cleve Dean, uh, world's strongest man, style competitor, enormous, 600 pounds, yeah. the biggest. Yeah. But casually involved by comparison to Levant. Um it's always it, it, I, I don't like to to um, to talk down on the, the greats of the past and I as again John the greatest I know if I ask John this question uh, he will say the, the legends of the, the late 80s 90s early 2000s were just as bad as I know he will say that mm -hmm. so you, there is part of me that feels like we do have to honor those guys but if I had to and I think this is the the popular opinion if I had to bet on who is the peak, it, it, it's it's the winner of this match. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different story. Yeah, it, it's it's comparing history to this moment right now. And people progress, techniques progress. Uh, as you said, if, if you're just training in the gym, you can turn up and, and be one of the best arm wrestlers in the world versus the way that it's going now with the popularity of the sport, the technique, evolution, people training specifically for arm wrestling. And then to be able to say that you're the best in the world at the moment when, when it's in that platform and in that era, that's the difference. It's a uh, yeah, and and there is no comparison against the history that other people have made in their sports and their, and throughout their time. It's yep. just at the moment these are the two. This is number one and number two in the world, and we're going to find out who is the best for right now. Yeah. And and what what a what a moment and what a title that will be, uh, if if that happens, the the, the legacy for either of these gentlemen, uh, it, it, it's concrete. It becomes so set in stone. Like for I think of it from Levan's perspective first and foremost that uh, Le, Le, Levan was oh You're Le, me. <laughs> on camera sorry Levan was Levan has been so dominant in his recent recent rise. I mean. If we look at what he did against Dave Chafee, it's just unheard of. No one has just held on to Dave and talked with him like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy. Uh, I feel like this is the final step for Levan. Devon is a very different style of opponent than he's ever faced before. Uh, he's not, as, by Levan's own words, Devon is not the strongest of the opponents he's seen, but he definitely brings other things to it. So this is like the final feather in his cap for me. I, I genuinely believe that Levan could retire after this match and he would still forever be debated mm -hmm. as one of the best of all time. Yeah. You agree? Absolutely. It, it's kind of a, a difficult situation for Levan in a way. If he, say he wins his match 6-0, just completely destroys Devon. Where does he go from here? He's 32 years old. It's like, there's no, I mean, yeah, some other opponents that are in the top 10, but it's never going to be as much of a big impact as this match is happening. He, mm -hmm. could, he could walk away right away into the sunset and forever... Anyone who is is stepping up to that number one place would always be saying, "Well, yeah, but what about Levan? What, what if he made a comeback? Or you would never have beaten Levan in the day." Like mm. that—that's the difficult position that he has in winning this match. For him, obviously, he, he wants to win, and and his fans and everyone, and uh, I'm sure his team is working very hard for him to win. But in terms of the growth of the sport, probably the best <laughs> situation 
to happen is for Devon to pull off the win, hopefully get a rematch, hopefully have some amazing matches going forwards. But mm. uh, obviously, Levan, if he does win it, it puts him in that position where it's like, you've conquered the sport, you've you've cleaned out the division, where do you go from here? Do you want to retire and do something else? But if yeah. he does have plans to do that or if he wants to stick around, well, there's probably not going to be any other matches that are going to be as this level, you know? It, it, yeah. This is number one, number two. It's Even true. the second match, that, that, that you know, the number three match, it's pro- it's not going to have that same impact that this one's going to have. Mm. And, and that is that is the the, the reality for, for this match. And Levine, he has been so dominant that uh, he's completed everything. Uh, you know, there's a part of me that, that does feel empathy for Levine in, in the respect that Levine's rise to the top actually happened at a very unique time in the sport. Uh, a unique time in the sense that we had the tragic passing of Andre Pushkar, mm. who was the man and then there was Denis Saplenkov as well uh, and those two guys were, 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 were due to fight and Andre passed uh, tragically mm-hmm. Denis then became ill uh, and not himself no longer competing mm-hmm. Levan rose in that time he never faced Pushkar he never faced Denis um, his most significant opponent during that time was Vitaly Lelettin who in his own right had the same story. Never beat Pushkar, never beat Zaplinkov. So there was, I, I feel for for Levan that he never got the opportunity to to show where he's at relative to those greats of the sport. And so there will, there, there was always the potential that there was forever going to be a question mark above uh, Levan. Mm. He's gone a long way since then uh, to correcting that. He, most notably, his victory over Dave Chafee was so incredibly dominant that we thought, well, okay, no, no. Saplenkov didn't do that to, to Chafee. Um, we never saw Pushkar and Chafee, so we don't know. But mm. but what Levan did to Chafee is like, well, yeah. okay, different. Uh, enough so that everyone thought, okay, this guy's probably the peak. For him to complete the story with Devon, it, it, it seals the deal. It, it, I, I do think it is done um, for Levan. And as you say, there's, there's nothing left after that. If that is the case. Yeah, what do you do? Case. You ride off into the sunset and say, thank you very much. I'm wrestling world. I'm done. I've conquered it. But at 32 years old, what do you do with the rest of your life? If he has a plan, I don't know. It's it's a difficult position to be in. Yeah. And, and then then uh, contrasting, we have Devin. Um, for him to win this match and to to be seen as the best of all time, it's, it's a, I feel like that is something that Devon had already actually come to terms with in his life that he was never going to have. Mm-hmm. I don't think he realized that it was on offer. Um, I think well, I'm back the clock a few years ago. Uh, Devon would have never have dreamt that he could have brought this moment about. He, as the champion that he was in 2008, when he beat John, we all acknowledge that Devon was at, at one time the peak in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but Fans never held Devon as the best. Uh, they just didn't. They said Saplinkov and Pushka and now Levan. Uh, and, and a lot of people even mocked the thought of this coming about. But Devon has gone to a place and he's proven something uh, that we didn't see coming. And I don't even think he knew it was in him until all of a sudden it was upon him and, and he's built himself forward. And here we are. We stand at a point where now Devon genuinely... Has a go. He, I mean, he's a favorite. Yeah, he's the favorite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What does uh, it What does it do to his legacy if he wins this? Uh, it, it cements it. it. It cements him as as one of the best of all time. R- regardless, I mean, he he's always been one of those guys. He's been the guy, probably one of the most widely recognizable people in the arm wrestling world, uh, because of his tours throughout the world he's always promoted it he has a fantastic channel and he's a fantastic guy always friendly nice to people um willing to share all of his knowledge with people uh for him to be having this sort of match it, it has come about because he kept seeking out the best challenges for himself mm. and i remember him saying a couple of years ago before the michael todd match he was a bit down and out he didn't have motivation there was no i think wow had sort of wrapped up and there wasn't any big matches, big challenges on the horizon for him. And in that situation, when you don't have a goal, when you don't have a vision, you don't have a direction, it can be very difficult to motivate yourself to continue to improve. 
uh, when the Michael Todd match got announced as a potential, um, that was where he really kicked things into gear because Michael was seen as potentially the best, a real threat to Levan at that time. Uh, and, it, I mean, he would have been the underdog in that match. It was the motivation that he needed to get back into the training and he really peaked for that match and he took it really seriously and he built up a fantastic uh, resume of, of, of work to get into that match t- to win uh, and he dominated. Mm. And it was from that that he then moved forwards in terms of, oh, I've got something, I'm, I'm back. I'm back in the realm of I want to be the best in the world and I'm, I'm sort of being recognised as it potentially, but you know, if I really want to hit that peak, Levan is the guy you got to beat, and then it, it, the opportunity, thankfully, has come about. <laughs> I, I've said that because I've seen so many times when when it's like, "Oh, this guy's the best," or "This guy's the best." They never face each other, and you never get the answer. But yeah, we, finally... we, we get to know. We get to know. Isn't and and one of the things about Devon's legacy when I reflect on it is, uh, I, I I sense and have sensed for a while a frustration from Devon that. He has not been respected uh, as well as he should in terms of his physical achievements. Like people will say he's been the best ambassador for the sport, without doubt. Mm-hmm. I think we all agree on mm-hmm. that. He has. But there have been skeptics to say that people have thrown accusations that Devon has dodged European arm wrestlers. Mm-hmm. That Devon never went out and pulled Saplankov. He never pulled a, a Nemerov Cup. Uh, Devon was an active serving Special Forces soldier, highly deployed. Uh, and he had a small window. And, and after he defeated John, as Devon will say, no one would give him the match. Mm. Now, whether that is the truth and the reality or it's something different, Devon, I feel, has suffered a frustration because there's just, no matter what he says, there's a certain percentage of the population, the fans of the sport, particularly of the, the European uh, dominant guys, they, they just don't accept it. They, mm. they say, sorry, Devon, you were never the, the peak. You dodged the monsters, the Russians, the Ukraine. Like, and uh, I feel like this match means a lot to Devin because of that. His legacy will be really well summed up if he wins this match. It, no one will question him anymore on yep. dodging Europeans if he wins this. That's right, because the, <laughs> the biggest European you could possibly face in history is the guy he's going against. So it's like, okay, oh, you think I've dodged the European leagues? I'll take the best guy that you've got. <laughs> 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 if I beat him, then all the rest are negated. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Exciting. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we might do next for you guys is we are going to take a look at how this match may specifically go. We have two very different athletes coming to the table. Levan Saganishvili, who is the powerhouse, the strength, the titan of the sport, uh, the absolute peak in the physical sense. Against Devon, the man who many people have described as the best technician on, uh, on earth. He understands the sport better than anyone. He studies it. He's the wizard of the arm wrestling world. So let's have a look now at how this match may actually play out. Levin Saganishvili versus Devin Larratt is one of those matches where the instant you hear it being announced, you stop, you go, whoa. Levin Saganishvili is the largest, most powerful human to ever step to the arm wrestling table. This is arguably the most important. It's definitely the most talked about arm wrestling match in the world. This shows you the type of man that Devin Larratt is. I mean, he wants the fight that everybody says is impossible for him to win. Can Devin Larratt pull off the greatest upset in the history of arm wrestling? That's the real question. It's absolutely possible. It's absolutely possible. Levon, you need to get bigger. Levon has never lost a single round in a super match. He has a perfect record. This match is Levon crushing Devon 6 0. Devon, you have to get smaller. One of the most intriguing stylistic matchups the sport has ever seen. On one hand, fundamental brute force power. On the other side, absolute tactician master. 
a defensive counter-attacking, uh, squeezing the life out of his opponent ability. If you're betting with your money and your brain, you're going Levin. But if you're betting with your heart and you want a comeback story and you want the internet to break and you want talking points from generation to generation, you pick Devin Larry. If ever there's an opportunity for the tide to turn, that's, I think, where he'll never get it back. 6-0 Levan. Devin has no chance in hell in this match. Devin Larratt wins this, and they're probably going to need a silver bullet to solve it. Without question, the biggest and most important match in arm wrestling history. I will show him things that he's not seen before. I will. Devin Larratt may well be the most complex arm wrestler alive, but Levin Sagan really is another level of power. What he can move in the gym, what he can move on the table, this guy is not like everyone else. This guy is different. This guy is an absolute freight train. Levan is the absolute epitome of a monster at the top of the mountain of the world of arm wrestling. This guy has never lost a single round in an arm wrestling super match. He is an absolute monster when it comes to arm wrestling. He is the king, he is the god, he is the ruler of all others. For Devin Larat to even have a chance at winning a single round, it is going to take absolutely everything he has and almost a miracle. Devin Larat versus Levon Saganashvili. The match that is much more than just a match. The match that pits one side of the world versus the other. One way of thinking versus the other. It has divided the whole world, the whole internet, whatever side you choose in this battle, it has almost become pure hatred on the other side. Is Levan, arguably the strongest arm wrestler to ever be on the table, able to conquer Devin Larratt, or is it Devin can do what no other person can do? Not only take a round off Levin, but win the match. Everybody's beautiful. Everybody's beautiful. Levon is incredible. He's, uh, he is what this modern peak of arm wrestling represents. Devon Larat. Devon Larat, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Everyone wants Devon Larat, yeah. Yes. You know, where Levon is at in terms of his legacy in the sport is a truly phenomenal place. He doesn't have many more things left to do on the list to establish what is one of the most impressive legacies ever in the sport. The man has gone undefeated in his Supermatch career after rising to the top through WAF tournaments and he has looked untouchable since. What he is wishing for in facing Devin Larratt is, is somewhat seen as the final test. It's somewhat seen as that, okay, can you defeat? Devin Larratt is the wizard of arm wrestling. He is the ultra spiritual athlete who has never stopped searching for greater and deeper levels of technique and mastery in this sport. If Levan Saganishvili can conquer Devin Larratt, his legacy is set in stone. Devin Larratt versus Levan Saganishvili is a very important match, not just for the outcome, but as a turning point potentially for the arm wrestling community. You're going to have before Devin and Levon and after Devin and Levon, regardless of who wins. But the outcome, the person that does win, is going to push things forward in a certain direction. That is probably more interesting to me than who the winner is going to be. Where are we as a community going to be three months after, six months after? A year after. An absolute defining moment for the sport. Uh, Devin Larratt, he commands armies of fans from the West. Levan Saganishvili, uh, his loyal followers sit back, watch, and proclaim their superiority uh, from where they stand. This match is going to totally give one side of the arm wrestling world's fans every single piece of evidence they need to stand and not only yell, but proclaim confidently that their region of the world, that their guy 
is the king of arm wrestling and is truly number one in the world. But it is one thing for sure. It is going to be one of the best, one of the most talked about matches in arm wrestling history. We're ready, bang! Levon Saganish really versus Devin Larratt, king of the table four. 25th June, only on pay-per-view. Hey, hey Levon, <laughs> keep getting bigger, buddy. Alrighty, ladies and gents, welcome to the biggest arm wrestling match in history in depth analysis. What we're going to be going through over the next little while is a very detailed look at a few possibilities for this match. First of all, what we're going to look at is what does this match look like on a technical standpoint if it's Levan Saganish really dominating? Then we're going to have a look at the other side of the coin. What does the match look like if it's Devin Larratt dominating? What shape will the match take? And finally, and it's hopefully the one that comes to be, because we all want this match to be close, we're going to have a look at how this match could unfold in a technical analysis and standpoint sort of view if the match goes to a silver bullet, if the match is right down to the wire. That's what we're going to have a look at now, ladies and gentlemen, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the in-depth analysis of what is undeniably the biggest arm wrestling match in history. Okay, so to kick this one off, let's have a look at Levon's match up against Dmitry Trubin of Russia in 2018 at the Vendetta 50. Now, you can see here straight away round one. This is fresh versus fresh. This is when Dmitry's at his most dangerous and Levon is pushed to his maximum. You can see Dmitry getting a good start, but Levon catching and reversing, getting control of the hand and wrist through great use of bicep strength before proceeding to the side to get the victory. Now, let's have a look at it in slow motion. You'll see that Dmitry Trubin has the high ground. He goes on the attack. It's, it's the bicep defense and pronation defense of Levan. He then rises up, gets on his tricep, slides his elbow forward using solid static bicep pressure, which is going to come up in a moment. You can see him gaining control here. There's the movement there. The elbow comes forward. The hand gets high. The regroup happens. Now he has hand control and can add the side pressure, takes the wrist, gets the victory. That foundation there, he will use again. Outside of straps, unable to yet hold on to Dimitri Trubin. But once in straps again, he's starting to get dominant. There's that catch and defend with the pronation and the bicep. In the slow motion replay, you'll see it. Catches with bicep strength and pronation, more so than fingers, then slides his elbow forward, gains height, takes the wrist, adds side pressure. Once again, the same formula being used. Now that the, the uh, momentum is starting to turn, you'll see the replay there. He no longer needs to grip high. He's gripping low and can even do it outside the straps, gaining victory over Dimitri Trubin in a decisive manner. Now, what's interesting about the style that we just saw from Levon against Dimitri is the fact that he really does catch from the beginning with solid threat through the bicep and pronation. We don't see Levon containing with fingers, not until the later rounds, once he feels his opponent has exhausted their energy, has lost their threat from center, then Levan starts to go on the attack and control. He grips lower and is even happy to hold on out of straps. But very interestingly, and most importantly, is what he does off the go in the early rounds. This is going to be critical come this match with Devin Larratt. Um, Levan defends with bicep and pronation. He doesn't attack, he defends. Now let's fast forward to September of 2021 with Levan's most recent super match against USA's Dave Chafee. Now Dave Chafee, first of all, you have to recognize is one of the strongest humans in arm wrestling. There's a distinct evolution to Levan's game as we look at the slow motion replay here of the opening round. And that evolution is he now trusts his hand. Where against Dimitri Trubin, we saw him rising and pronating as his main defense. Levan now holds on right from the get-go. He trusts his fingers and even against someone as strong as Dave Chafee, you can see here, look at him holding on. Dave Chafee tries to rise and pronate, but it's the finger control combined with the back pressure, bicep, and pronation that just overwhelms his opponent. Levan Saganishvili has most definitely upgraded since 2018. You can see the way he trusts his hand inherently, uh, where he never used to do that at all. Dave Chafee here, you see, even in an open arm top roll, gives it his best, but Levan Saganishvili... Holds on, gets the job done. It's for this reason that Levan is the overwhelming favorite. His fundamental power, his bicep strength, his pronation, and now his wrist flexion and fingers truly are the top of the sport. There's, there's no denying that. No one in the history of arm wrestling has ever defeated Dave Chafee in the manner in which 
Levan did in 2021. That victory sets him apart from everybody. And it's that victory in the fashion that he did it so dominantly that has made almost everyone worldwide agree that Levan truly is the number one. One of the most interesting points is the fact that no matter what Dave Chaffee did, he was unable to slip. Now, think forward now to Devin Larratt. This man is a, is a wizard who has relied heavily on the strap. Levan Saganishvili, in most people's opinions, will have no intent on allowing Devin Larratt to get where he needs to be. And it's once again one of the main reasons why Levan is such an overwhelming favorite in this match. So let's now turn our attention to the underdog. Let's now turn our attention to the man who's looking to pull off the absolute miracle in this match, Devin Larratt. Let's have a look at his style and see what he is going to bring to this fight. So let's start in Arm Wars 2011, where Devin Larratt takes on Richard Lupkis, a similar-sized human. You'll see here, outside of straps, he uses a very similar strategy to Levan to get to the straps themselves. He rises hard using his bicep. He uses pronation statically through the hand. And once that gets the brakes on his opponent's side pressure, you'll see the, the twisting in the hands start to pronate, and they will mutually slip, and off to the straps we go. Now, once in the straps, Devin Larratt displays one of his many weapons, a high posted and then supinated high hook. You'll notice there from the beginning, he took control of the high ground. Now that he's got control of the rotation in that high hook, he's still unable to pin Richard Lupkis. Lupkis has so much fundamental strength that he still has a wall in the way. But Devin Larratt is in a position where you'll see him start to nod and smile because he knows he's breaking down that man's defense with every second that remains. The critical moments you'll see here as he demonstrates the high hook the supination ha comes from a place of high static threat through back pressure. Once he gets into that position, he sets an amazing ability to out-rotate his opponent. From there, Devin Larratt takes control of his opponent's ability to breathe. He takes control of his opponent's ability to counterattack, and he just puts up a wall, a defensive wall at the center table that inevitably his opponent feels that squeeze happening. That Python-like squeeze, Levin Larratt starts to smile. And look, this is just one of the many technical weapons he possesses. So right there, we've seen that Devin Larratt certainly possesses a very capable high hook coming from a place where he posts incredibly high, wrist rise up, takes control of the high ground. Off the go, in the straps, he keeps these knuckles up and he supinates and allows the opponent to crash sideways into that defensive high hook. If successful, Devin Larratt takes control of the rotation and then he adds his shoulder pressure to it, cutting off the ability for his opponent to rotate or pronate through their hand. That puts the inevitable bleed on the opponent's bicep. Devin Larratt looks at them, smiles, waits for them to bleed, and then finishes them off. As we're saying, this is just one of the options that he has. A lot of people say this option will not be used against Levan. Levan is simply too powerful for Devin to first of all even get to that position. But it is a weapon he possesses. Keep your eye out for it in the matches because it could come out to play. Now let's have a look at another weapon that Devin possesses. Now what is probably the most controversial of all of the tactics and uh, styles in arm wrestling. Devin Lara possesses a king's move. You can see him here up against John Brzezink. The king's move is a absolute red line defensive position, the most defensive of all outside style arm wrestling. You see Devin Larratt off the go will actually allow his opponent to go sideways. He'll kick back his wrist and pronate and then climb and every opportunity and eventually start to take control. His opponent will feel that defensive power and concede. Slow motion replay, watch it again. From the high position, he will allow his opponent to go sideways. He won't try to cup his wrist, but he'll in fact kick his wrist back negatively and then as his opponent drives, watch Devin pronate through the base of his wrist as he kicks his wrist back there. You can see his wrist goes back. He pronates through the, the base of his wrist and drags hard, very low, one inch away from defeat. Devin Larratt goes on from there. As I said, every opportunity he'll climb and regrip and cup, taking control of his opponent's wrist and pronation and subsequently showing them that they are going to lose the long battle if they continue to attempt to arm wrestle. You can see there John Brzezink looking to come forward. Nothing there left for him. Devin Larratt's in control, and his opponent concedes. 
Now, as I was saying, this is the most controversial of all of the arm wrestling moves out there. Devin Larratt has invested a lot of time and energy into this style of arm wrestling in the last mm, four to five years. It is something that most fans expect him to do. It's where we expect him to attempt to bleed the hand and wrist of Levan Sagnashvili. Uh, does Le- does Levan worry about this move? Some say yes, some say no. But Devin Larratt, you can almost feel that he is going down this path. Uh, he will look to create a stop in the hand and wrist. He will look to create shenanigans. He will look to create as much drama as possible. He'll be hunting that stop. If he can get that stop, he then starts to go to work with all the fundamental style arm wrestling we saw. The high hook will come back. All those things are possible, but I feel like the most likely stop that Devin Larratt is going to be hunting is going to be with that ugly King's move. Okay, so here are the big three questions answered. If Levan Sagadishvili dominates this match, it's going to look very pure, very fundamental. Expect back pressure, expect finger containment, expect pronation heavy, expect him trusting himself to hold on to Devin Larratt, not allowing Devin Larratt to slip, not allowing Devin Larratt to even get to the King's move, just finishing him with pure control, fundamental power. Now, on the other hand, if Devin Larratt pulls this off, if he gets a victory, what it's going to look like is shenanigans. What it's going to look like is chaos early, talking to the referee a lot, causing dramas, restarts, fouls, slips, all those sorts of things are music to Devin Larratt's ears. What he will be looking to do is take control of Levan's hand. He will look to bleed his hand and crack his wrist. He's searching for the opening. Expect him to look to use the King's move in the early rounds. If Devin Larratt achieves the stop, he'll he'll look to achieve the stop once, twice, maybe even three times before he's confident to stand up and return to fundamentals. If Devin Larratt is going to win this match in a dominant fashion, it's going to be because he's bled out the hand of Levan and then he's taken control of the rotation of Levan and then he's finished Levan. Now, what we hope to see. The silver bullet match. Expect it to go something like this. Levan takes the early rounds. Look, Devin's going to throw everything at him. Devin's going to cause that chaos. But Levan, he's good. He's calm. He's still there in control. But he has to slip. He can't hold on to Devin outside of straps in round one. So he slips. There's a little bit of work going into his hand. He gets into the straps. Too much power. Boom. Job done. Big celebrations. Round two comes back. Devin Larratt's in his ear. He's calling him up to the table once again. Gets him onto the table. Same thing again. Slips out of straps. This time, the balance of the hands doesn't look as dominant for Levan. But round two, in straps. Once again, Devin attempts the king's move. This time, you can see flattening of the wrist of Levan. But still, gets the job done. 2-0. Third round comes around again. Devin Larratt knows that he's really having to get some inroads in now. Devin Larratt starts to employ shenanigans again. He goes early. He cops fouls. He cops warnings. Levan getting frustrated. Devin Larratt extending the setup as long as he can, pushing the, the bounds of the rules. Slips. Once again, Devin Larratt's hand starting to look better in the straps. King's move. Stop. King's move. Stop. But still, Devin can't get back. Devin ends up losing the round because Levan, with his wrist broken back, flop presses. Now... With Devin's back entirely against the wall, we're going to start to see the ability for the bleed to be successful. Devin Larratt, King's moves, gets the ground, starts to regrip, starts to climb, starts to bring the match back over, starts to talk to Levan and say, hey, hey, big boy, what is going on? Where's that tank? Where's that energy? It's bled out. You're in trouble. The the chatter begins. Devin Larratt gets on the board. As the rounds go on, then Devin gets more and more likely to use the high hook. As he feels he's got control of the hand of Levan, he'll look to then control the rotation, control center, and then ultimately decisively win the match. But when this gets to the silver bullet, Levan is a very intelligent, high table IQ arm wrestler as well. Don't expect Levan not to have adjustments. Devin Larratt will be coming home with a wet sail. Levan will know that. Levan will have an ace up his sleeve. Levan will he flop press to look for that last victory whilst Devin Larratt is trying for a king's move to control centre. Will, will he have his own king's move? Will Levan just 
feign weakness in the setup to then launch an all-out drag hook. What can be certain is if the match does go to a silver bullet, it's anyone's game. Just because Devin Laird has come home with a wet sail does not mean he is certain to win the seventh round. If it goes to the silver bullet, expect drama. Expect absolute arm wrestling drama as good as it gets. And that, my friends, is exactly where I hope it goes. Levon Saganishvili vs. Devin Larratt, King of the Table 4, 25th June, only on pay-per-view. Hey, to Levon, <laughs> keep getting bigger, buddy. Matt Conley, where do you see this match going technically? Uh, do you think the King's move's coming at the play? Are the high hook gonna, gonna feature? Where does this one go? Yeah, Devin's gonna have to pull out something, because if he goes strength for strength, power for power with Levan, he's just going to get crushed. So it's mm. going to be a lot of manipulation in that setup. He's going to try to pump Levan's hand. He's going to take his elbow away. He's going to mess around as much as he can. He might slip to get the strap and then do the same thing again. He needs to get wear and tear on Levan's arm to be able to then start implementing the different techniques and the techniques that will work for him. The, the king's move... <laughs> Is, is his is the clone move the clone the clone move. Move. that's right the clone <laughs> move. The, the, the clone wars have started yes uh so that's going to be the interesting moment if he's going to pull that out because has levan faced that has he been training that he said he hasn't he said he mm. didn't need to mm. he said he's too strong for that well we'll find out if he's strong enough to beat this king's move the clone move as it, as it is now <laughs> formally known uh yeah, absolutely. It's exciting. This is what makes the match. This is what makes it interesting. It's not power for power. This is what arm wrestling is about. If it was just strength-based, the strongest guy would always win. It's mm. not. It's about technique as well as strength, as well as strategy, as well as timing, and being able to get your position. That's what you need to do. Devin's a master at that. Mm. I haven't seen Levan do a lot of different techniques. He does pretty much the same thing every time. It works yeah. for him. He's, yeah. he's, he's dominant with that. But if he has a tired arm it, it, through all the little manipulations that Devin's been doing. Maybe he's going to false start a couple of times to try to get in Levan's head. Oh, that was a pin. Nah, 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 nah. Mm. And make, <laughs> you know, uh, make Levan like sort of uh, the, to the point where he can then implement those little techniques, that strategy mm. to tire out Levan and then start his own game plan. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And Levan in the uh, press conference, he made, made comments that he hasn't had to use arm wrestling technique for a long time. He said, it's been a long time since I've had the arm wrestle. Like, even Dave Chafee just very comfortably uh, destroyed him. So he's not anticipating to have to do anything. It, it could backfire on him, couldn't it? It really is a, a, a risk he's taking, uh, not being prepared, uh, not really forward thinking on how to deal with the King's move should it stop. He simply said, no, I, I'm too strong. It will not matter. Mm. Uh, will he regret that? Yeah, well, it's not a good strategy. You've got to prepare for every situation. It's like a, a, an MMA fighter that, that doesn't train their ground game. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just a fantastic striker. It doesn't matter. I'll just knock him out. It's like, well, you're going to lose on the ground. That's what's going to happen. Uh, so from Levan to say Devin has 0% chance, that uh, mm. I don't know. The, the mentality going into a match like that where I'm just going to win no matter what. I'm just too strong. I'm just too powerful. Well, what happens if uh, this happens? And what happens if he gets this position? Oh, no, it just won't happen. I'm just too strong. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It is. It, it's either it's either an incredibly confident man or it's an incredibly uh, regretful move that oh. hindsight will uh, represent. But um, uh, one thing you said, Matt, that, uh, that really resonated with me was about Devin and that he the depth in which he has studied the sport and and his approach is very, very meticulous and complete. He, I've known Devin for nine years and I still see Devin sitting there looking up into the stars, asking himself if he's missed something mm -hmm. in technique. What is there more that I have yet to discover? Uh, and I think that component of Devin uh, is what Levan should be fearing, yeah. if anything. Um, that is the that, that is the true dangerous thing, mm. uh, and and in fact, ladies and gentlemen, what we might do is we're going to have a closer look into Devon. Now, Devon is he's one of the most remarkable athletes alive, uh, not only in the arm wrestling sense, but he has done so much more to that. So, if you have never actually heard the story of Devon Lack, then sit down and uh, get comfortable because 
what you're about to uh, watch is a video uh, that goes so raw. Uh, it's very candid from Devin. It was a, a somewhat of a, a, a conversation that we had uh, that has become a wonderful piece that will really show you an insight into not only who the man is, but how he became the incredible technician that he is and what led him to be here at this moment to contend for the highest peak the sport has ever seen. Oh, I, I love this sport. I love, I love the feelings that it gives me. In this life, you know, you can get material wealth, you can get all sorts of things, but the real treasure, I think, is these feelings. And to me, this is a feeling I'll treasure forever. I'm in it, I'm a lifer, right? Like, I'm gonna arm wrestle forever. I don't think I'm gonna stop. Yeah, <laughs> until it kills me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this very special expose on Devin Larratt. Uh, this piece came about by chance. It was a private conversation between myself and Devin Larratt uh, that we have now put together uh, with his permission and it has become one of the most amazing pieces of content in arm wrestling history. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit back, relax, and enjoy Devin Larratt until I die. What truly is amazing about Devin Larratt is that he was able to rise to the top of the sport of arm wrestling, all the way to being considered the world's number one ranked arm wrestler, both left and right, during a time where he was an active Special Forces member of the Canadian Armed Forces. This feat in itself deserves adoration and acknowledgement. To be able to be actively deployed in such rigorous and dangerous situations and yet still continue to rise to the top of a sport that, to be honest, had plenty of monsters in it, is truly an impressive feat. Um, I, think, I think a big part of it is... You know, when I think about my athletic career, uh, you know, from the beginning till now, um, I mean, I've always loved arm wrestling. I've always been crazy about it. Uh, but the, the truth is, is, uh, you know, until I got out of the military, it really was um, like, fuck, I, I, was, I was in an extreme, well, I, I mean, you know, I, I was in a job that, uh, did not allow me to specialize as an athlete to the degree that, um, you know, one can't, right? Um, I mean, I, I was winning Ironman. I was, uh, I was, I was the forces athlete of the year back when I was in the regs, even. Um, I, uh, I, I was a SISM basketball player, so I played basketball for Canada, um, all the while, you know, I was, I was doing very well at arm wrestling, you know. Straight away, we can see that this man is a one of a kind. He, not only was he a member of the Canadian Special Forces, but he was their soldier of the year in their athlete sense. Uh, he was also representing Canada in basketball, all the while growing in his dominance in arm wrestling. This man truly is a phenomenal athlete. And his rise was only just beginning. Um, and, and you know, when I went to special forces, uh, it, it was difficult because I had this, you know, great love for the sport. But uh, it really, they really didn't like me competing. They really didn't like it. They didn't like me drawing any attention to myself. So, I mean, a lot of the objections that I got, I had to very carefully plan which events I was willing to kind of, um, you know, risk. I mean, it's not like I was risking my career, but, you know, they did, they weren't happy about it. So I had to kind of very carefully select my opponents, select when I was going to get to do it. Um, you know, which, which was good. And, you know, I, I did enjoy the way I did it because it really let me kind of dissect each opponent bit by bit. And I think that that actually is, you know, when you're, when you're facing really good opponents and, um, 
it's different than training for a tournament. You know, that um, restriction actually forced me to, uh, I think, become a much better arm wrestler because I was just focusing on all these super great guys, really understanding them, really breaking them down, uh, you know, one at a time until I got to 2008 uh, when, I, when I faced John. Imagine it. You're a special forces soldier. Uh, on one hand, you're sitting there protecting the good of humankind. Uh, and you want to also grow as, a, as an athlete in this great sport of arm wrestling. And you, you're torn between your, your ability to go and compete publicly and represent and, and climb those ranks uh, that, are, that exist. And then on the other side, you've got this position where you have to stay private. You have to stay secretive. No one can know what you're doing. I can only imagine the difficulty that that would have presented Devon and uh, his family and his support crew and, and the promoters and the athletes. Um, it would have been a very tough time. And, I mean, people say all sorts of shit about the John match, but uh, the truth is that that match did get me ranked number one in the world, uh, you know, while I was fucking actively being deployed, and, you know, like, eating rations and fucking, you know, going out on like, you know, long range fucking patrols and fights. And, uh, you know, so at the, at the peak of my military career, you know, um, I also got to where I was ranked number one in the world. Uh, and and I, the same is true in like 2012 or 13 when I beat Pushkar, I was still actively being deployed. You know, I was still, going overseas and fighting people, you know, like it, like actually fighting people, not arm wrestling. Like we're, you know, I was, I was involved in the war, so, you know, that whole period. Um, and I do not think that it's possible to do that now. It might be, it might be. This factor here has to be one of the most significant things about Devin Larratt, his ability to be actively deployed uh, for somewhat 10 months of the year and yet still be able to achieve that number one rank in the world. When he defeated John Brzezink in 2008, he took that title on the right arm in the vast majority of people's opinions, officially crowning him at that point. Same again would happen in 2012-13 when he would defeat Andre Pushka on the left arm. Uh, I really do think this is one of the most amazing achievements in sport, to be actively deployed like he was, fighting real wars, and still being able to climb to the number one rank, both left and right arm. Right around the end of my reign is when the fucking super monsters started to come out. Not like there hadn't been super monsters in the past, but now we were starting to see super monsters that trained specifically for arm wrestling. You know, like uh, there were 300 pound dudes, there were 350 pound dudes, you know, back, you know, around the turn of the millennia. But most of these dudes, they weren't arm wrestlers. They were like, gym dudes who are wrestled, you know. Um, and when I got out, a, a lot of things have changed. I feel like now is more like the first time in my career where I'm really actually super dialed in on arm wrestling. I've always been dialed in on arm wrestling. I've always loved it. Uh, but now it's much different. Now it's much different because now I'm like, I'm becoming a super monster. This is a really interesting moment in the career of Devin Lara. That point where he goes from Anakin to, to Darth Vader and, and, and he, he embraces all that it is chasing the super monsters of the sport, as he described. Uh, this chapter of Devin's physicality is one that is so very evident. The biggest, the baddest, the strongest Devin Lara that's ever walked this earth is in existence, and it leads him to a very different place and a very different style of preparing for arm wrestling. But you know, I feel like I I uh, I studied the sport from kind of a different perspective for a very 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 long time, um, and now you know, at this later age, which is really not typical, I'd say, when it comes to most arm wrestlers, it's like I'm. Um, it's like I'm a little bit like, like if you talk about Star Wars, <laughs> like 
for the first, you know, 25 years of my life, I was very much uh, like a, a young Anakin. <laughs> right. Like I really embraced the light sides of the sport. And it's only in these past few years that I am now embracing, uh, you know, all of it. And, but I have so much with the other stuff. It's like I'm now becoming a complete, uh, a complete fighter. And the whole way of the giant pumpkin thing, I, I really believe that actually, I, I really believe, I mean, you know that you do the same thing. Um, I, I think that this style of training in time will be the norm, not the, the, the weird thing. Like, I think that most arm wrestlers at a high level will embrace this theory after dudes like me and, and you and a few others just, you know, after doing it for like five years completely blow everybody out of the water with the trajectory and the gains that are possible. The giant pumpkin theory that Devin speaks of here is the, the concept of going all in on simply one arm, one hand involved in arm wrestling. And Devin Larratt, as you heard, he's been in it for two and a half years and he's seeing enormous progress. Uh, the ability to turn himself into uh, a, 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 a monster like Oleg Zok who has just an overdeveloped single arm side uh devon larratt embraces this training to pursue the big mega super monsters um like i'm seeing it now like and i've done it for two and a half years like my right is now like on this totally different level um and my left is actually really good too but but my right uh and it's as a result of this training for sure um it's just, and, and and I don't think it's going to stop. That's the thing. Like, I think in five years, I think that you can create yourself to be Oleg Zok. Um, I don't know. I think, I think one of the things that is also kind of more unique about me is that I've always just like, at the real base of it all, I've just always really, really loved it. Um, and and because I've really, really loved it, I've never kind of put it down. I've never stopped, you know, trying to find a way to do it, or find a way to enjoy it, find a way to make it interesting and fun. Uh, and I think that that's probably evident as a result of my evolution and my, my change of tactics and styles throughout the years, through injuries, through, I mean, I've, I had three surgeries, right? And none of them stopped me from, from arm wrestling. Uh, you know, nothing stopped me from arm wrestling. Nothing has. And that's one of the special things about Devin Larratt. As we saw in his rules to, to being successful or great in the sport of arm wrestling, the first rule is love the sport. He does that. It's, un, it's so clear that he, that he loves the sport. His second rule of never stop. He has lived that so, so true. Devin Larratt has evolved through injuries and surgeries. He's never stopped. He's changed his style when he's needed to, and he continues to add layer upon layer of strength and conditioning specific to arm wrestling. Uh, and it lifts him to a place where he is truly one of the best people in the sport, uh, no matter who you are. It's phenomenal stuff. Now, what we're about to discover next is the mentality behind the man, because not only is he incredibly impressive in a physicality sense, Devin Larratt is a monster of mind games as well. Let's now open up chapter two, ladies and gentlemen. Devin Larratt and his mentality. Devin, you said um, in, in your recent video where I think it was titled Fear, uh, I, mm. you described that you you seek it out like that's what keeps you going um right yeah of course and, and and i don't think i'm alone like i i think that what i'm saying is the truth for for so many people it's man and make a person scared it's like the 
it's why people like to be the underdog. It's it's a psychologically better place to be. Um, you know, if people think that they can do things, you know, I, I don't know. It's just it's not super appealing. Like, um, like say like there's a local tournament. I know I'm gonna win. I hundred percent know I'm gonna win. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't change me. It doesn't make me grow like a. You know, you you give me a challenge where, and, and a challenge like Levon, dude, I don't think I think I give myself a low chance, a low chance, not like oh I might be able to do it, oh it's fifty fifty. No man, Levon's gonna fucking murder me. Wow, hearing those words right then from Devin that Levon is gonna murder him, uh, it, it, that shows you straight away. I'm sure there's more to come, but it shows you straight away uh, how seriously he takes. The challenge of conquering his fears, of conquering the impossible. It's what drives him at the end of the day. It's what gets him out of bed. It's, what's ma- it's what makes him keep on moving forward. Devin Larith, he loves it. You know, and, and but, but I'm absolutely like, uh, uh, I am, uh, dude, I've got a fucking death wish. <laughs> you know, like I want, I'm actually legitimately upset. Like, there's a big part of me that's upset that I didn't die in the war. Like, I should have died, dude. Um, and I, I'm always seeking out kind of ways to kill myself. Uh, and the Levon match, you know, is it uh, is it a reflection of that? Maybe a little bit. Like, I love things where the risk is super high, and it forces me to live quicker, to, to, uh, to learn more, um, to force myself to try and do things perfectly. Like there's a big difference between doing things at like 60%, 70%. Fuck. It's so hard to do things hundred percent, but extreme fear will make you do things perfectly. You know, if you legit think somebody's going to kill you, or you you live you live much much better, way cleaner, way way more precisely to deal with the threat. That has to be one of the most powerful things I've ever heard. Uh, Devin Larratt, that he almost wishes that he he died uh, on his active service, that he felt that he he should have died, uh, and it's the same fear that drives him to operate uh, in arm wrestling. He says that he he. He's calculated, he's accurate, he, he just is more efficient when that genuine fear is there and present. And the Levan match even it has similarities, it, seeking out the extreme situations just so he can operate at the highest level. Amazing. So, um, so yeah, so I, I love arm wrestling and I want to, I want basically arm wrestling to shape my lifestyle. Um, and, and the only way to do that is to give myself things that I actually don't think I'll be able to do. Um, because it, it makes me, it makes me eat. It makes me go to bed. You know what I'm supposed to make me, um, do the work, the boring fucking stupid work that I hate to do. Like I, I, I hate to lift these weights. Right but I'll do it, you know, four times a day, like three times a day, like every, every fucking day of my life. Like, um, yeah, that's another thing. Like, I mean, people, people take time off. People take, I I don't, I never have like the only time I've ever taken off throughout my entire career is before, before I can, I don't take days off. Um, never, never have, um, I, and I think that I think that I think that I've put in more time in the gym than any arm wrestler by by a fucking margin. Like like if it's double, I'm not surprised. Um, I also think I've put in more time on the practice table than any other arm wrestler who's ever lived, but by a margin as well. Um, yeah, I just think that I've spent more time immersing myself in the arm wrestling lifestyle than, than most people have. And now it's, it's even more like, I mean, I think I could have said those things even while I was serving 
and now, dude, from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed, it's like with a few little family interruptions, like, like, I mean, I still have to like, you know, take my kids here or there, or, you know, do, do little things, but man, I'm training, I'm training, I'm getting ready to arm wrestle and fight like all day long, all day long. Wow. How about that? If you ever wondered what it took to get to the top of the world of arm wrestling, that's it right there. Devin declares that he's certain by a margin that he has spent more time in the gym with arm wrestling specific training than anyone else in existence. He also says that he spent more time on the table than anyone else in existence. Uh, this has to be seen as one of the most admirable uh, qualities of Devin Larratt. His relentless consistency in his approach to this sport truly has taken, to, taken him to where he is today. So, I mean, I guess the, the social media thing, I think that I'm one of the front runners who has, I mean... I'm one of the first ones to to kind of open that door to make it normal in the sport. Like I think that I'm one of the first guys who's really actively utilized the tools of YouTube and you know Facebook and Instagram, whatever, to uh, to use it in terms of athletic performance or on on in a match, right? Like drop little things here, or there, you know, start talking shit early. And I think that in the match, uh, I've really normalized, uh, you know, stretching things as far as they can be stretched. And I think that even today still, I think that I'm, I'm a big reason why there's all this discussion on rules and whatever, because, uh, because, people are aware that I am going to stretch rules to their maximum capacity. So I think in that sense, um, I think that I am somewhat responsible uh, for kind of an overhaul of, of the rule system in arm wrestling because guys like me will attempt to break them. Like, um, so, you know, it's like, you're making a program and you want somebody to test the app and, and see if they can break it. Well, I'm that guy, right? Like you give me a set of rules, uh, and I will fucking beat the piss out of it so that if there are holes in the rules and they can be exploited, I'll, I'll do that. Right. What a beast is Devin Larratt when it comes to mind games and social media presence. Devin Larratt has weaponized, his ability to communicate to his opponent through social media. Uh, and it's proven effective on the table as well. His opponents get upset, they get ruffled by it. And as Devin Larratt declared as well, he will push the rules to the point of breaking point. He almost feels like he's responsible for the evolution of the rules because he will be that person that gets in there and just breaks it down and takes it to its absolute limits. Uh, Devin Larratt's mind games and his mental approach to this battle or this warfare that is arm wrestling is second to none. Now, what we're going to experience next, ladies and gentlemen, is regarding his legacy. Devin Larratt is one of the most significant arm wrestlers in the history of the sport. Love him or hate him, Devin Larratt has achieved huge things. His legacy will remain for forever in this sport. But what we're about to hear now is Devin's perspective on his legacy. So let's do that. Let's open up chapter three. Legacy. Your 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 legacy that you're you're setting up. You made the comments there that uh, you're always you're always looking to to die with the words you use, which is which is full on. Like I think you, your legacy is is being set up in a rich and deep way. Um, whether you're on the John side of the fence, the Devon side of the fence, your legacy is deep, man. Oh, I know. I know. And that's why I don't like to fight it too much. Like, I, I love John. And I've been inspired by John. Um, you know, there's 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 things that I've done that John hasn't done. I mean, John, John is... I don't like to attack John. Um, it was difficult for me when John and I had our match because I really don't like to attack him 
because uh, he's like a saint for all of us. Um, look at, I was the first person to hold the right and left title at the same time in the open weight division. Um, after that, it's like every single guy did it, but I was the first, um, I kind of broke the ice there. Um, I love that right there. Hearing Devin express uh, that he, he has so much uh, love for John, that he considers John a saint and someone that he's always looked up to, and that he doesn't like to attack him. Uh, that gave me a lot of respect for Devin. Because at the end of the day, we know John Brzezank is the greatest armorist of all time. His legacy is, is essentially untouchable. Uh, but Devin Larratt has done things that John hasn't done. Devin Larratt has... Uh, has grown the sport. Devin Larratt has dominated the sport. And in, in many respects, Devin Larratt is in the debate for the GOAT. But I loved hearing that from Devin, that he respects John so much, uh, despite the fact that Devin, in the eyes of the fans, is sometimes uh, pushed forward as, as, the, uh, as the GOAT over John. Uh, I loved hearing that piece. And, and, it's, and it's neat, you know, like after I beat John in 2008, it's it's really true that I couldn't get a match. I could not. It was it, it, the fucking world went quiet for me. Uh, about a year, like all the Europeans, no one would pull me. We had like a whole bunch of people like lined up before the John match. And then I pulled John, Arson, um, Andre, Dennis. Total fucking silence. Like no no more communication on it like uh done and it was like that for a while and then you know i started to get more active start my injuries started to come out more and i started to get more up to the day that i had my surgery the day that i posted that i was having my surgery i had like 10 offers for a super match it was incredible now this right here is one of the biggest points in contention if you're in the debate uh, which all arm wrestling fans are. If you're in the debate of, is Devin Larratt legitimate? Is he really as good as the Devin Larratt fans say he is? Then this is a big point. A lot of people will go out there and say, Devin Larratt never faced the Eastern European monsters. After he beat John in 2008, why didn't he pull Soplenkov? Why didn't he Why didn't he seek out the best guys there were? And the answer there we see from Devin is that it went silent. None of them wanted to face Devin Larratt after he beat John in the manner that he did in 2008. None of them wanted to face him after he beat Andre Pushka in the manner that he did. Whichever way you see it, that's the way the story's told from this side of the fence. Uh, I don't know. Either way, awesome stuff. You know, going down in the 225, you know, after the surgeries was really nice. I really enjoyed that time period. Um, I'll probably get there again at some point, you know, after this kind of stupidity is, is somewhat satiated, but, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I think I, I'm, I'm going to do this. I think everybody knows that I'm in it. I'm a lifer, right? Like I'm going to arm wrestle forever, uh, competitively, promotionally, just, barefoot fucking walking around uh probably probably forever uh i don't think i don't think i'm gonna stop um i have no plans to retire um like it's not like oh if i do this then i can stop or if i do this then i can stop no it's really not like that at all for me it's like i'll just keep doing it i'll just keep doing it until you die. Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> until it kills me. <laughs> <laughs> this characteristic here, this is Devin Larry. This is him encapsulated, wrapped up all in one uh, moment. Devin Larry will arm wrestle till the day he dies. He loves the sport. He breathes the sport. He is the sport. And arm wrestling is Devin Larry as much as Devin Larry is arm wrestling. Uh, what he's done in there in the way that he just uh, just stays so ingrained in the sport is something that I think everyone looks up to. And it really does show you exactly what it is to be at the core of Devin Larratt. Uh, the man is something special and uh, he's leaving a big legacy behind.
again, it's not, uh, it's not unique to me, but I think that I've probably done a very good job of embodying it. And, you know, we all learn that, uh, you know, actually arm wrestling is a huge part of the sport, right? <laughs> Obviously, you know, if you want to be an arm wrestler, you have to arm wrestle. And, and, and I think that the whole cosmic punch theory about how, you know, you need to touch uh, a, a thousand hands, 10,000 hands is something that I've really taken, um, I've taken ownership of that. And that's going to be another big thing that that I'm going to continue to do is I'll just keep touching people like uh, all around the planet. This, guys, has to be one of the coolest things that Devin Larratt has uh, brought to the sport. The cosmic punch theory where he travels the world, he grips up with as many people as he possibly can and just exchanges energy with them. Guys, I want you to comment below. Have you arm wrestled Devin Larratt? If you have... Let me know. It's in the pinned comment. Let me know when and where you arm wrestled Devin Larratt for the first time. Like, uh, you know, I've done, over my career, I've done a lot of travel where I've just, you know, gone to Israel, gone to Sweden, gone to, gone to, the, gone to the East, gone to Australia, you know, all over the States where it's not got a lot to do with competition. Like, I've traveled just to go arm wrestle these people all around the world. Um, and I think that it's certainly enriched me to basically, uh, you know, basically every style and every opening that you have in arm wrestling. It's, I've seen, I think I've seen about everything. Um, and that's going to continue as well. Like after Levon, I will probably do like another massive cosmic punch thing. It might be a year or so, maybe a year and a half that I'll just travel and just train and absorb and fucking, you know, go from club to club and just pull people all around the planet, you know, and, and it's got, and it'll have very little to do with competition. It'll just have to do with, with touching, you know, 10,000 hands. Um, and I, I do think that, there's a lot to that when you when you talk about like culture, uh, like when you talk about the the growth of of the culture of the sport. Um, I think that's one of the coolest things about the sport of arm wrestling is how uh, you can be an incredible arm wrestler, like really good, and never touch a weight. You just need to hang out with people and have fun and um, absorb each other's energy. It's without doubt that Devin has influenced the culture of the sport. And he, and he, he touches on it there uh, with his cosmic punch, his world tour uh, theory. You can actually become one of the best arm wrestlers alive um, just through arm wrestling. You don't need to touch the weights. As he said, uh, he believes he's experienced just about every opening there is, every counterattack, every defense, uh, everything, every shape that there is. Uh, because of this cosmic punch uh, approach. It really is a unique signature of Devin Larratt's. And it's something that if you haven't done as an arm wrestler yourself, you ought to try. And I think that for a lot of the parts of my career, I've been kind of a walking embodiment of that. Like there's been matches that I've gone into with very little, you know, weight prep. It's been all just, you know, when I pulled Todd Hutchings, that was basically the Australian tour for a month or whatever it was, come home, rest for 10 days, pull Todd Hutchins. Um, you know, um, yeah, I don't know, buddy. I, I, I hope you can do a good one. It's always good to see good videos. Because I see the same shit over and over, right? Like, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's, uh, it's kind of a bit cookie cutter. But um, Well, I, yeah, I think, I think uh, what you've shared here is amazing. I, I, it's, yeah. It, yeah, uh, it's unreal. Yeah. Hey, Devin. Um, yeah. Man, what you you've just what you've just rolled off is one of the most phenomenal things I've ever heard. Yeah, that richness that you just described. Oh, it's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Anyway, man, I just just thank you, yeah. thank you so much for this interview. Uh, man, hey, even just on a pers- pers- regardless of product, it was just cool to fucking hear all that, man. That's that's it was a mega mega story, yeah. and I, I've known that, but I haven't. 
I haven't heard it said like that. I'm like, oh shit, wow, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, dude. All right, All you right. take care, man. We'll talk soon. All right, bye. Yeah, you too. Bye bye. Yeah, we can see that Devin Larratt, the key moment there, he loves this sport. And you saw in those first opening minutes that when he had won that match, the emotion that he had, he truly embodies the spirit of arm wrestling. Mm. It's something that he treasures. It's something that means so much to him. It is part of his soul, part of his identity. And throughout his life, I don't. I think he would have had a very different life if he didn't have arm wrestling. Uh He's an amazing guy. He has been around the world, pulled against the people through, from all different parts uh, and different strengths, different techniques. He, he's come together, and you would only do that if you had a deep love of the sport and you wanted to mm. share it with as many people as you possibly could. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 a, what an amazing video. Like, honestly, I, I've never experienced Devin Larratt speaking with such authenticity it was it was different there was mm. something different about that and, and yeah he was there was a vulnerability and and you could sense his genuine love for the sport as you said uh that that video at the, at the beginning truly beautiful seeing that you could see the the genuine emotion there i'm getting the shivers literally <laughs> thinking about it right now but um so much of devon's character has been built through uh, as he said the, the lines there i i will do this until i die until I die. And, and, and he said, like, one of the most powerful things I've ever heard in my life, he said in there, he, he said he almost feels a guilt that he should have died on his active service. Um, and that he now needs to seek out, like, uh, he, he it, it doesn't feel right that, that he lost comrades, mm. friends, uh, and, 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 he, and he survived. Mm. Uh, and so he's he really does embody... Bravery and courage, and and he's, through arm wrestling, he's he's seeking out the 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 absolute most extreme situations that will bring out the best in him. And and this match with Levon mm. is, is is in a lot of respects that for him once again. Um, honestly, uh, he, he kind of he blows me away in the, in that video. Uh, I learned so much about Devon. Um, I, I got to take my hat off to the dude. I, I, I genuinely admire him. Oh sure. yeah, he's amazing, an amazing human being, and. For him to say those things, those vulnerable to be vulnerable in that situation, and to admit, you know, hey, I have survivor's guilt, and when I was in battle, other people that I loved and cared about and supported, they died, I didn't, and it had a, a massive effect on him. And throughout his life, since those things have happened, it's to live with the guilt of something that you lived through, and and your best mate or somebody else or somebody that you respected or somebody who was on your side didn't lose, uh, has driven him to a point where he, he is now seeking out the biggest challenges. And he ha mm. you have seen that. So we were saying before where before he had, when WoW had sort of ended a little bit uh, and there wasn't any big matches on the horizon for him, it wasn't those big challenges for, challenges for him to seek out was when he sort of had his biggest low. And it wasn't until the match with Michael Todd that got announced that he, he found another reason and another big challenge to then start pushing towards that again. Uh, and then after that, you know, taking on uh, the mountain, uh, Hafford Bjornsson in a boxing match, you know, the world's strongest man, let's go box the world's strongest man. Okay, he's got six weeks to train. <laughs> Biggest challenge he could possibly have, put himself in there. Uh, not a lot of people would do that. that. That mentality and that phone call that really showed you why he's feeling that way, why he seeks out mm. those sorts of challenges. And now he's got the opportunity again to, to go and test himself against the absolute best. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing I love that he said in there was that when your life is on the line, when you, when you, when you are truly fearful, uh, you become incredibly efficient. You become incredibly deliberate and efficient and you find your best version of yourself. There's, you, you you, like you almost go into a state that uh, you didn't know you had. Um, and Devin, having had experienced that state over and over and over and over again, uh, I, I think he's brought that back to his arm wrestling world. Mm -hmm. I think Levan and the overwhelming, like, like we, heard, we saw in the, the, the opening credits, Levan is going to murder me, mm -hmm. uh, said by, by Devin. He acknowledges the dominance of the physicality of Levan, but... It's that it's that 
backed into the corner. It's that up against all odds that brings out truly the best in Devon. Yeah. Uh, and it's, I, I think it's it's wonderful for the sport that we get to see such a moment where, um, like, like sport is kind of a miniaturized version. It's a replacement of warfare yeah. at the end of the day. It, it, sport stops us from going to and killing each other. It, it gives us as close as we can get to it. The the uh, the emotions, the, the the way your body reacts mentally, uh, physically, even um, it feels very real. This is conflict, and uh, Devin Larratt's experience in those emotions surely going to serve him well for this match. Mm. He wouldn't have stepped up to this level if Levan wasn't such a challenge, and having Levan as such a dominant force, and and like he said, Levan's going to murder me. Mm. Man, if you're going against someone who's going to murder you, you're going to pull out ev- all the stops. You're going to train like you've never trained before and you're going to do absolutely everything to win. Mm. I think the contrast is Levan um, not having that feeling and feeling that he's so dominant that he will win regardless, which you know, it's such a contrasting position. Mm. Devin putting his life on the line. Levan, this is a sparring match. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's learn a little bit more about that man. Levan Saganishvili, he is so dominant. He is unbelievably confident coming into this match, uh, despite the fan polls uh, favoring Devon. Levan's camp is ultra confident. So now let's have a look at what makes the Georgian Hulk such a formidable force and why he is, in most people in close circles, the overwhelming favorite to take this win. <laughs> Without a doubt, the highest peak in strength arm wrestling has ever seen. Levan Saganishvili. A perfect record in supermatch arm wrestling. Can anyone stop the Georgian Hulk? Man, Levan's gonna fucking murder me monstrous, super strong, maybe he's impossible to beat. The super heavyweights with the abilities and spirit of a lightweight. At 400 pounds, this man with specific arm wrestling strength possesses physicality unlike ever seen before. His legacy is growing, it is being set in stone. Without question, the strongest to ever do it. 2022, Levan Saganashvili represents a stark example of arm wrestling's physical evolution. There's always that one guy, that one guy that turns up and can wreck everything. The kind of guy who doesn't care for records that have been already established, the, the kind of guy who just turns up and demolishes everyone. It happens at all levels. It happens at school when you're a kid. It happens at, at college. It happens when you're a professional. Levan is that guy. He is. The Georgian Hog, Levan Saganashvili, has reached a level of physicality in the sport that truly is uh, it's near untouchable. The reality is Levan Saganashvili um, is stronger than everyone that's ever existed specifically for arm wrestling. There have been super monsters before. There have been giant humans. There have been incredibly strong athletes that have taken part in this great sport. But none like Levan. Levan has specifically built himself to be an arm wrestler. He is one of those super giants. 400 pounds, uh, his wrists, his hands, everything about him so very much physically the biggest, the strongest, the baddest. And the thing is, he's done it all, as Ingen Terzi put it, he's done it all with the the, the spirit and the uh, technicalities of a lightweight. Lovan Saganishvili is different. He has an ability to move and command a presence uh, that just crushes everyone else. It was actually in 2015 that I... Uh, I, I didn't meet him 
But I saw Levine for the first time. It was my first ever World Championships. It was in Malaysia. And this guy walked in the room. And, you know, it, he's bigger now. He's way bigger now. But he was in the super heavyweight class in 2015. And I, I remember the, talking with my buddies going, hey, look at this guy. <laughs> look at this guy. And he, he was massive then. Levine Le was massive then. Yeah, he, uh, he won the World Championships on that day. I remember it. And it was by no surprise. And he was on the way up. At that point in time, he, was, uh, he wasn't the Levine that we know now. He wasn't the unstoppable beast, but he was pretty focused. You could see that. The, the way he carried himself, his intent, uh, it was obvious. Uh, he was on a mission. And his mission was to become the overall number one ranked arm wrestler. And now that he's, now that he's there, he's at that point, he's at that level, he's pretty much universally recognized as the man. It's all about, I guess, setting legacy for him. Yeah. What he's done since he stepped into the professional super match in arena is nothing short of freakish. I mean, the man not only has won every match, but he has not dropped a round anywhere. He's made a point of going out there and he's actually declared it that he intends on having a perfect score sheet for his entire career of super match arm wrestling. He, he's won every single match he's, he's been in 6-0. to zero. He doesn't give rounds. He doesn't take chances. He doesn't allow you to, to work in your own lane. He just crushes you everywhere. He just crushes you. One interesting thing to think about with Levan is the question, does he, does he have technical ability? I mean, Le Levan is at a strength level, and, and let, let's be honest, there is just a level in, in the sport where if you are that much stronger than your opponent in a fundamental arm wrestling sense, then you don't really need technique, do you? And Levan is there. Levan really is there. He's going to be asked questions soon. He's going to face Devin Larratt at King of the Table 4, and he will be asked questions of a technicality level. But the thing is, is Devin even strong enough? Is Devin strong enough to force Levan to have to really use advanced table IQ? I think he has it. If you look at Levan's rise throughout the, the ranks, he's never, he's never made mistakes. He understands how to protect critical areas. He understands how to control and deny his opponent's strengths. Um, he's explosive. He, he, I don't think he's a bad arm wrestler by any stretch. I think it's safe to say he doesn't use crazy, deep, twisted technical positions. Uh, but when it comes to his well-roundedness as a technical arm wrestler, Levan's there. He really is. A lot of people ask the question about Levan's personality. Uh, is, is he the beast? Is he that scary, monstrous presence always? Um, and, I, and I like to share a story that I, that I have personally with Levan that kind of encapsulates that. In 2019, I traveled to Poland for the Zloty Tour, and I was in Munich Airport uh, on my way, and my flight was delayed. And, uh, we, I think I was locked on a Darren Jordan Davis, we were there. We posted a photo uh, on Instagram, and Levan liked it and uh, messaged me via Instagram and said he was in Munich Airport as well, waiting uh, for a flight. He wasn't on the same flight as us, but he was waiting for a flight as well. Uh, we caught up with Levan, and to be honest, the dude is a, he's a, he's a nice guy. He's a very, uh, I guess like all giants often can be, they're gentle in their nature. Um, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a warrior. He really does encapsulate that. Uh, he's a dangerous man uh, who comes across as so kind until it's time. And I witnessed that that transformation. You know, when we hung out with him at the airport, he was such a, a relaxed, easygoing, likable guy, laughing and telling stories and just, um, his presence at the time didn't seem intimidating. Like he's a big dude, yeah, but it didn't seem intimidating. He weren't, he weren't scared to walk past this man by any stretch. Fast forward a couple of days and it's the, PAL's top eight final. Levan is taking on Vitaly Laletin uh, for the grand prize. I'm I'm standing uh, in that kind of corridor where Vitaly and Levan are about to come thundering out 
Uh, the lights are on, the music is pumping, the crowd's energy is building. Vitaly Lalatin comes out first. Um, everything's set. And then I see Levan. And Levan comes out of this tunnel in such a manner. He looks 10 feet tall. His chest has somehow gotten deeper. His shoulders are back and wide. Uh, the look in his eye is killer. And you're like, oh my goodness, this is, <laughs> this is not the gentle soul that I uh, hung out with at the airport. Levan has the ability to, to really go from uh, the quiet teddy bear to the Georgian Hulk. He has that switch, and when he does make that transformation, oh my goodness, look at it. So what will it take? What will it take for anyone to ever catch and perhaps even defeat Levan? John Brzezink said it, it may be impossible to beat. I think with the current crop of arm wrestlers, it's, it's pretty safe. It's pretty safe to say that he, he won't be beaten. Devin's going to have a go. Natalia's going to have a go. Ermi's is chasing. But realistically, Levant's an overwhelming favorite no matter who you put across from him. I, I can't see anyone in Levan's time catching him. He's that strong. He's that good. The sport is at an interesting place now where uh, it's expanding, it's growing, there's more money coming in. That will attract more giants. Levan, as big as he is, he's not the only giant out there. And, and But he is the first giant to specifically dedicate to arm wrestling in its fullness. And that is why he sits where he is. As the sport continues to grow, as the sport finds its feet among sports fans around the world there will be more giants there will be more but no matter what Levan Saganishvili has left his impact on the sport already he will leave it very deeply those 400 pound thunderous footprints uh, will never be forgotten because he was the first of the super giants specifically developed forearm wrestling he was the first man in the history of the sport uh, to really take it to this level. Levan Saganish really is a special kind of athlete. Um, one of a kind. And honestly, he's pretty much unstoppable. Is Levan Saganish really unstoppable? No one's unstoppable. <laughs> no one's unbeatable. Oh man. Uh, I feel like, I feel like I feel like he is, but you're right. He's not, is he? Anything can happen. Um, oh, man. Surely he's unstoppable, though. <laughs> he's definitely the favourite. He, well, he should be the heavy favourite. I'm surprised in the polls that they have changed into Devin's favour. I think the only reason for that is because people are seeing more of what Devin's doing as opposed to what Levan is doing. But And they've seen the progression. I mean, Devin has obviously improved in his strength and his training uh, leading up to the match. But Levan... From what I've seen and his opinion and his attitude, it feels very much like he just thinks he's going to just steamroll Devin. And mm. when you've got that feeling and your motivation's nowhere near as high, if you're going to win regardless, it's like, eh. You know, if you're seeing it as like, this is a sparring match to me, that's where you can go wrong. That's where you don't train as hard. You don't train against the techniques your opponent might be using. It's Rocky One here. We've got we've got Apollo <laughs> Creed, the arrogant champion that picked out uh, some bum from uh, Philadelphia, and uh, and Rocky saw it as his opportunity of a lifetime, and you know trained exactly the same way that, that Devin has trained in mm. terms of putting his life on the line and getting everything into this position to to take the the world championship. Uh, and then you can see in that match, I'm, I'm going to go Rocky. <laughs> I like Rocky. <laughs> There's a lot of Rocky stories here. But it does seem the parallel there. Because in the in the fight, when they had uh, Rocky and Apollo Creed at that, uh, at the end of the first round, Apollo is going, this guy thinks it's a real match. Mm. He actually thinks he's going to win. Yeah. <laughs> he's really trying. Yeah. I, and then he had to step it up. And obviously, it turned into match which was an amazing movie and it was for that reason and we're hoping that something like that will happen mm. in this match yeah it's interesting isn't it because the, uh, levan is uh, 
he is perceived as unstoppable by so many. Like when 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 you interview different different arm wrestlers, uh, particularly those who are closest to Lever, uh, they're very confident. They're like, no, 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 it's not a match. It's a uh, <laughs> it's mm. <laughs> six zero. It's like oh. it's not even going to be anything. Um, he is different. He has, uh, as Devin described earlier, he is the super giant of the sport. He is, as Neil Pickett put it, the 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 peak of the physical evolution of the sport. Um, he is the man, but as you say, like there's this risk that comes with it of arrogance, mm-hmm. of uh, just uh, being too casual, and you, we have to ask that question: Has Levan uh, underestimated his opponent here? Is he taking this too lightly? There were suggestions of it in the uh, press conference. Um, it, if this backfires. How does that come about? What is the backfire going to look like? That's going to be terrible. <laughs> terrible for him. Because if you say your opponent's got a 0% chance, what's the point in having the match? It, 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 you know, mm. I'm just going to win. It's going to be so easy that I can't even be bothered. That's the opinion. If you say he's got 0% chance at winning, <laughs> why even train? Why even yep. bother? I think that was Devin's response to that. Mm. Why, why did you train, train so, so hard? Because Le- Levan did go out as far as saying, look, when the match was initially scheduled, he was not even interested in really having to train. Uh, so I th- there's almost, there is some truth that Levan genuinely feels that way. It's not showmanship. He, I think he does genuinely feel like I am so much stronger than Devin. It's not a, not a problem. I think he, he has trained a little bit. He saw We saw in the press conference that he said, I acknowledge that Devin has taken it seriously and he's going all in, but... So I, I made sure I did my thing, but he's still so confident that it's... He looked over at his, at his interpreter and said, mm. should I tell the truth? And they're like, yeah. Neil said, I want you to tell the truth. And he said, no, the truth is he has zero chance. Zero. Um, Devin loved that, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Devin gripped onto that. And, and, and we saw it at the culmination, or the conclusion of the press conference. Devin, one of his key points was... I will get acknowledgement from you. I will, I will, that is what I want more than anything is for you to look at me when you're covered in sweat and give me the nod of like, oh man, damn it. Yeah, you, you, you're the better man. Um, ah. We don't lose, I just want to go the distance. <laughs> <laughs> it's full on. It's, it's, it's incredibly full on. Um, it's incredibly exciting. I, I, I don't know. I mean, oh. No one knows what's going to happen. All we know is that it's it's chaos. Um, Devin Devin Larratt will bring all sorts of craziness to this. Levan must be careful. And uh, I mean, if we if we were to sum up his character in this, it, it, you've used the Rocky analogy. Uh, and, and ladies and gentlemen, in fact, what we might do is we might show you just how, in particular, uh, the character of Levan Saganishvili. Uh, can parallel to such people as Ivan Drago. I know you're a big fan of all things Rocky. Do you, do you agree? Oh, absolutely, yeah, for sure. I think it was it was classic, like a classic comparison there. Um, and and not to say that uh, the Georgian politics and Russian politics. Right. Yes, we acknowledge that. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, a very big difference in terms of the the difference. Like you say, Apollo Creed for um, Devon. The brash showmanship, you know, it's it's he's putting on a show and performance, and he wants this to be exciting. And then you've got the ice cold superstar mm. um, killer that's in the corner that doesn't need to talk. He doesn't need to say anything. He's going to do his talking. In the you ring. will lose. That's right. <laughs> you yeah. will lose. The, <laughs> the first words Ivan Drago spoke in Rocky Four, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a look now at a feature that shows you just how close these personalities. are. All right, it's time to go to school, son. Come on, get your hands up, man. You need an interpreter? It's time to go to school. You're the Lord's. In the spirit of Ivan Drago and Rocky IV, Levan Saganishvili is that man. He is the ice-cold man. He doesn't bite. He doesn't say words. He just believes in himself. Now... The cultural divide between East and West for this match, King of the Table 4, is very clear. And like in Rocky IV, the hooliganism of the West, the showmanship, the fans, they're very different to the Eastern culture. From a place of quiet, stoic respect is the East. It is in that shape that they do their best and they perform at their highest. A huge sense of national pride, we know in Rocky IV, 
Ivan Drago, he's just ice cold. He absolutely hammers his opponents. A 100 and zero record prior to coming to the USA and killing Apollo Creed. After Apollo Creed, it's then on to Rocky Balboa himself calling out the man. And look, the national pride there in Ivan Drago's Russian fan base it was so very real. Ivan was the invincible monster, as is Levan. You know, man, I watched Rocky IV the other day. It had been a long time. <laughs> it's, it's compulsory viewing for every boy in, uh, I think, <laughs> you yeah. should all do it. But I watched Rocky IV the other day just to remind myself of the true characters of this. And, and Ivan Drago's uh, persona and the character that he brings... It really is, for me, such a big parallel to the way Levan has just been unafraid. I'm not engaging with any of the nonsense. I am just, I know within myself I'm better than, than you, and you will lose. Yeah, <laughs> I, I loved it. I loved it. Um, it, it. It's To me, this is very clear that these guys are like that. And, and it brings with it a certain intimidation, doesn't it? Um, are you a fan of of the Ivan Drago presence or style of presence? You've got to have the, the... Both characters have to play well against each other. And the reason that worked so well in that film is you had Apollo Creed pushing the narrative and you could have Ivan sitting there doing nothing, saying nothing, but his presence was so important. It was Apollo Creed dancing around. You know, he's got this, he's got the showmanship, he's being silly, he's got all these hundred nicknames. And then Ivan Drago just literally kills him. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> and he couldn't be more of a villain in that particular moment. Um, the parallels are so crazy with, with Devin and Levan. Um, Levan, happy to sit there, be quiet, doesn't need to say anything. Mm. His presence is intimidating. Whereas Levan, uh, sorry, Devin... Is, is pushing the narrative, he's pushing the, the trash talk, the, the showmanship, he's getting the audience interested. Uh, so you can really identify those two characters as being from that movie in a way. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's very real. And, and, and it, it, for me, it paints a beautiful picture of the excitement of sport. It's, it's one of the things that, uh, that makes the experience for a fan just truly amazing. Uh, it's, I know it's one of the things that I enjoy most, but um, what about Devin Larratt? If... If we had to paint him in a certain way, uh, outside of Rocky, where are we going? Well, <laughs> I know where we're going. <laughs> we're going straight to the boxing world with Muhammad Ali and George Foreman in the Rumble in the Jungle, which was mm. uh, Muhammad Ali had been beaten, uh, and then George Foreman stepped in, destroyed the guy who'd beaten Muhammad Ali, and then Muhammad Ali gets the call up, you're fighting George Foreman. Everyone's just gone, are you serious? Like, mm. you're going to mm. get destroyed. Not Muhammad Ali didn't have that opinion. He's like, I'm going to win. I know I, I know how to beat this guy. I know the strategy I have. He wasn't as strong. This is the same thing. Like mm. George Foreman, incredibly strong. There's footage of him hitting that heavy bag and literally leaving a big dent yeah, in it. It's uh, <laughs> and it's it's this very similar parallel to uh, Levan being so strong, so powerful. But Muhammad Ali had strategy he had the technique he had ideas he had movement he had footwork he had cardio he had all these different elements that he was going to bring into that match and this is something that is quite interesting that in that very first round uh he threw 12 and landed 12 right hand leads on george foreman no one mm. in boxing throws a right hand lead at all it's an insulting <laughs> thing to do because it is the slowest punch you could throw he did it because George Foreman would not have seen any of his sparring partners throw a right-hand mm. lead in about mm. 30 years <laughs> leading into the match. It's an insulting thing to do. Muhammad Ali keyed into that and said, he, no, one's, no one's done this to He's him. going to get under his skin. I'm going to do it. And not only that, trash talking during the match, leaning on him every time. So you thought you went, could hit harder, George. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you ain't even breaking popcorn, George. You ain't even breaking... Like, my mother hits harder than that. Just yeah. leaning on him, leaning on him, bringing him into the ropes, wearing him down, wearing him down. So the parallels are very similar. This, this is how I see Devin being able to win, using techniques, using trash talk, using, using the ability to... Uh, have a hundred different techniques at his disposal as opposed to just power, as opposed to just strength. Mm. It, 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 everything he's saying, it does encapsulate exactly what Devin has been 
portraying forward. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look now, specifically, at a little bit more closely at, at exactly how parallel these two gentlemen are in the way that they've approached the match. Of course, Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest athletes of all time, known for his trash talking, and of course, Devin Larratt, the biggest trash talker in arm wrestling and facing a similar opponent. So let's have a look at this great comparison. Incredible. And you, George Fullman, all of you chumps are going to bow when I whoop him. All of you. I know you got him. I know you got him picked, but the man's in trouble. I'm going to show you how great I am. In October of 1974, Muhammad Ali would take on George Foreman, the king of the world at the time. George Foreman, unlike any other, too strong for everyone. But it was in this battle, the rumble of the jungle. Ali in round one, copped punishment. George Foreman, too strong, too powerful, dominating Ali, just like everyone said he would. By round two, it was more of the same. George Foreman's power, a different level, too much for Ali, and Ali had to retreat. Everybody said, I told you so, this is how it was gonna go. But by round three, we start to see cracks appear. We start to see fatigue in the man. Ali starts to talk. Ali starts to have a glimpse. People start to see that the edge is being taken off of the great man in George Foreman. By round four, things have turned. Ali starts to take the ascendance. The aerobic capacity of the older man in Muhammad Ali starts to dominate. He starts to bring out his technical prowess. George Foreman swings wildly, hoping to finish it by round five. Desperate to finish the match, George Foreman's guard starts to drop and he starts to have heavy hands. Ali picks up the pace. He gets on top. By round six, it's more of the same. Ali now picking him apart, technically in control, aerobically in control, absolutely coming home against the odds. Ali enters into the final rounds of this match and does the unthinkable. Ali now in full control. Technique, strength, power. He gets the job done. Can Devon be Ali? That's a pretty cool damn moment in sport when, when Ali did that to George Foreman. Uh, like, it's, it's forever written down in uh, folklore of sport. Um, the the rope dope uh, the king's move. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, the yeah, clone, clone yeah, move brought it yeah, out. There's, yeah, the clone <laughs> move. Uh, there's so many parallels. I, I, I love... I love drawing these parallels from great moments in sport. Um, arm wrestling is at its point where it's forging its way through and has its opportunity to write its own stories, but being able to draw parallels from great moments like this, uh, I, I feel it, it certainly works on me. It brings the fans to life. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you feel the same? Oh, it's exciting. And when you see moments like that, the story being told because you've got the unbeatable destructive champion who and then the guy figures out a way to win and it's like the way he did it was so clever and you know it looked like for the first four rounds that george foreman was beating a very weak ali against the ropes it was like oh he's mm. destroying him one of the, the quotes from the journalist was ali is leaning back so far on the ropes, it looks like a guy leaning out of his window trying to see what's on top of his roof. <laughs> yeah. uh, but then you saw the little moments that he mm. was he was turning in the tide. He was wearing him out. He had so much strategy. That's what we want to see, and that's what makes sport exciting is the technique, the strategy. How did he win? How did he win? Mm. It's not just power on power. He was more powerful. Oh, there, there. Okay. It's like, no, he tricked him with this, and he did that, and he spoke that. That's what we're hoping to see with this match. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and so many parallels, uh, not only in the physical, the rope up to the Kings move, but the mental strategy as well. Devon is on a mission to get under Levon's skin. Oh, yeah. He's very much on that mission. Ladies and gentlemen, Devon really is on that mission. Trust me. So let's have a look at a little bit now of some of the strategies that Devon has taken to get under Levon's skin. Devon, it's time. He looked like a 415-pound pussy. Try to get bigger, but it is not gonna help you. Dude signed a piece of paper and didn't read it. I see you all North Americans. Don't worry, this guy is just gonna continue. 
continue to let me down. <laughs> Don't let me down, LeVon. I actually think LeVon is actually crazy. 415 pound pussy uh that has been that that sentence was the center of a lot of controversy uh how do, you, how do you see this the aggression is starting to rise in these men now that's right yeah absolutely they're going to battle they're going to war you, you can't be oh it's all nice and humble and respectful <laughs> it's you want to beat this guy he's got he, he's got what you want you want to physically dominate this person on the table it's not all fun and games. It's getting serious. This guy's really stepping it up. Yeah. We saw we saw Levon there with the the, the, the finger coming back. You know, that was in direct response to the, the that call from and we, we saw we saw great footage of I I see you North Americans. <laughs> I love that line. Like he, he understands where the fan base is. He understands who's behind who. Uh, he's got a point to prove the aggression starts to rise in these men as they get closer and closer to the event. The potential for it boiling over uh, is getting more present with every moment that passes. Yeah. Um, who's handling their aggression best? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. He needs it. He needs that to push him forwards to make it worthwhile for him. If he didn't have it, if, if he wouldn't be frustrated and angry and, and furious and build up that rage for something that you didn't think was worth it. Mm. He, he, he feeds on that. And you could see that at the press conference. He, he's pushing Levan. I'm pushing. Levan, you look fat. Levan, you're a pussy. Levan, this. You know, mm. he's, he's there. He's baiting him. He's pointing. He's poking him. He's poking the bear. He's trying. You grip up with me. And, and, uh, um, you can see Levan very much trying to ignore all of that. He's trying. But mm. it... You can tell by his body language. He, he's, <laughs> it's good. He's feeling it. He's handling it medium well. He he didn't bite back, mm. but you could see that he was trying to play it off. I'm trying to be bored. I'm playing on my phone. I'm, yeah, I'm not listening. What did he say to the translator? Mm. Oh, I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on. Uh, no, he, you know when somebody's in your face and they're they're aggressive. You, you, they don't need to speak the same language as you. It's like this guy yeah, you is, can feel it. wants you can to feel destroy it. you. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, look, it, there's no question, guys, that Devon's awoke in something different. Um, so before we get into that, I want to show you a little bit more of what exactly Devon Larratt may have awoken. Something's changed. Something has changed. Levan Saganashvili is struggling in the polls. Devon Larratt's stakes are sold out. Levin Saganishvili fans have gone quiet. There's fear in the air. You can feel it. It's real. I don't know. I don't know. Is it all hype? Or is there some truth to it? Is Devin Larratt about to defeat the Georgian Hall? Is he ready? Has Devon done enough? The form he's in, the shape he's in. There's questions being asked. Todd Hutchins ripping apart Iraqli, then saying he can't move Devon. The Russian monster Vitaly Laleta falling from his throne at the hands of Dmitry Solayev. In the last weeks of preparation, we see this photo emerge. Devon Larratt has awoken the vampire. From the darkness comes the bleed. But while the vampire in the west awakens, the drums of war sound in the east. June 25, all hell will break loose. Matt Conley, we are so close now. We are ready. I'm feeling the energy of these two guys. Oh my goodness. 
It's arrived. Who you got? <laughs> Who you uh, got this? Logic, Levan, my heart's with Devon. Your heart's with Devon? I, I think it's... Uh, I think Levan, 6-0... I'd love to see Devin win four three in a in a final kill off match three all. They go to <laughs> the vampire the as vampire we saw. Match. He's right. he's gonna be looking to drain it. Oh, I don't know. For me, I have to go. I have to say, Levani's gonna win this match. I have to stick by that. Levani's the stronger man. It's his match to lose. But oh my goodness, am I nervous when I say that? I need to get a prediction right. It's been a long time since <laughs> I've had a public prediction right, and I'm nervous that I'm not gonna get this one because I feel like Devin's vampire tactics. Are incredibly dangerous, but for me, the win is Levan's to take it. I know. So, ladies okay. and gentlemen, we are going to wrap up now this uh, premiere show. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are moments away from going live. Myself and Matt Connolly here. We are going to be joining all of you, those thousands of you that are about to join us to discover what it is you guys think about this match. Please. Uh, uh, don't go anywhere and make sure we will be giving away pay-per-view access codes as well right after this. So do not go anywhere. Jump straight over to the live. But before we go, you'll get to see one more time the hype promo that shows and encapsulates everything that this match is about. So ladies and gentlemen, enjoy it. And we'll see you very soon. 11 seconds is really versed. Devin Larratt is one of those matches where the instant you hear it being announced, you stop and you go... Whoa. Levon Sagarashvili is the largest, most powerful human to ever step to the arm wrestling table. This is arguably the most important. It's definitely the most talked about arm wrestling match in the world. This shows you the type of man that Devin Larratt is. I mean, he wants the fight that everybody says is impossible for him to win. Can Devin Larratt pull off the greatest upset in the history of arm wrestling. That's the real question. It's absolutely possible. It's absolutely possible. Levon, you need to get bigger. Levon has never lost a single round in a super match. He has a perfect record. This match is Levon crushing Devon 6-0. Devon, you have to get smaller. One of the most intriguing stylistic matchups the sport has ever seen. On one hand, fundamental brute force power. On the other side, absolute tactician master. A defensive counter-attacking, uh, squeezing the life out of his opponent ability. If you're betting with your money and your brain, you're going Levin. But if you're betting with your heart and you want a comeback story and you want the internet to break and you want talking points from generation to generation, you pick Devin Larry. If ever there's an opportunity for the tide to turn, that's, I think, where he'll never get it back. 6-0 Levan. Devin has no chance in hell in this match. Devin Larratt wins this, and they're probably going to need a silver bullet to solve it. Without question, the biggest and most important match in arm wrestling history. I will show him things that he's not seen before. I will. Devin Larratt may well be the most complex arm wrestler alive, but Levin Sagers really is another level of power. What he can move in the gym, what he can move on the table, this guy is not like everyone else. This guy is different, this guy is an absolute freight train. Levan is the absolute epitome of a monster at the top of the mountain of the world of arm wrestling. This guy has never lost a single round in an arm wrestling super match. He is an absolute monster. When it comes to arm wrestling, he is the king, he is the god, he is the ruler of all others. For Devin Larat to even have a chance at winning a single round, it is going to take absolutely everything he has and almost a miracle. Devin Larat versus Levon Saganashvili. The match that is much more than just a match. The match that pits one side of the world versus the other. One way of thinking versus the other. It has divided the whole world, the whole internet, whatever side 
you choose in this battle. It has almost become pure hatred on the other side. Is LeVar arguably the strongest arm wrestler to ever be on the table able to conquer Devin Larratt? Or is it Devin can do what no other person can do? Not only take a round off Levin, but win the match. Everybody's beatable. Everybody's beatable. Levon is incredible. He's, uh, he is what this modern peak of arm wrestling represents. Devon Larratt. Devon Larratt, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Everyone wants, wants, Devon. De, wants Devon Larratt, yeah. Yes. You know, where Levan is at in terms of his legacy in the sport is a truly phenomenal place. He doesn't have many more things left to do on the list to establish what is one of the most impressive legacies ever in the sport. The man has gone undefeated in his Supermatch career after rising to the top through WAF tournaments, and he has looked untouchable since. What he is wishing for in facing Devin Larratt is, is somewhat seen as the final test. It's somewhat seen as that, okay, can you defeat? Devin Larratt is the wizard of arm wrestling. He is the ultra spiritual athlete who has never stopped searching for greater and deeper levels of technique and mastery in this sport. If Levan Sagadishvili can conquer Devin Larratt, his legacy is set in stone. Devin Larratt versus Levan Sagadishvili is a very important match, not just for the outcome, but as a turning point, potentially, for the arm wrestling community. You're gonna have before Devin and LeVon and after Devin and LeVon, regardless of who wins. But the outcome, the person that does win, is going to push things forward in a certain direction. That is probably more interesting to me than who the winner is gonna be. Where are we, as a community, going to be three months after, six months after, a year after. An absolute defining moment for the sport. Uh, Devin Larratt, he commands armies of fans from the West. Levan Saganishvili, uh, his loyal followers sit back, watch, and proclaim their superiority uh, from where they stand. This match is going to totally give one side of the arm wrestling world's fans every single piece of evidence they need to stand and not only yell, but proclaim confidently that their region of the world, that their guy is the king of arm wrestling and is truly number one in the world. But it is one thing for sure. It is going to be one of the best, one of the most talked about matches in arm wrestling history. We're ready, bang! Levon Saganishvili vs Devin Larratt, King of the Table 4, 25th June, only on pay-per-view. Hey, and Levon, <laughs> keep getting bigger, buddy. <laughs>